Shalom, I'm Rabbi Yehuda, and I'm here to discuss with you why many African Americans are attracted to Judaism. Here in America, there are great movements of black Jews, uh, those who identify African Americans that identify themselves as Hebrew Israelites, and other people who feel or have an oral tradition of being Israel from antiquity. The question here is, is there a valid claim to these proclamations or these viewpoints or these feelings? Perhaps they are, and in other cases, they may not be. But nonetheless, we do see a reality unfolding of many African Americans being attracted to a form of Judaism. So with that, let's begin. Many African Americans that I spoke with, whether they call themselves Hebrew Israelites or not, have some type of affinity to the Torah. It could be because we can relate to the Exodus in the book of Shemot or Exodus, where the children of Israel were enslaved by the Egyptians, and later on, uh, through hard towards hardship and tormented practices that the Egyptians put them through. Uh, many African Americans can relate with their own ancestral slave experiences in America. In fact, many movements consider America as a form of Egypt. There are Midrashim that calls Egypt, or Misraim, which is Hebrew for Egypt, the land of limitations, meaning that it's a land of bondage. So in that particular philosophy or that metaphoric look, many of us or many African Americans consider America to be that Misraim, the land of limitations that was prophesied in Deuteronomy the 28th chapter. There are others who have not even studied those passages of Deuteronomy 28 which talks about the curses. The first part talks about blessings and the last part talks about the curses. Many of them focuses, focus on the curses. But there are many people who haven't even studied that or from churches and, have, and their spirits have been this affinity, this, this pulling, this actually this gravitation to the five books of Moses. And as time unfolds, when we are in the information age, they realize that perhaps because of this affinity, they may be the children of Israel. Now it is not a hidden history about the fact that most African Americans are from West Africa. So the question is, were there any West African Jews? And for those who have a historical tradition, an oral tradition, that they are Jews from West Africa, and that was passed down, and they are now reclaiming their heritage as Israelites in America, um, is there any real founding facts or truth that can support their particular claim? Well, the truth of the matter, there is. Now, not all African Americans can claim or make this claim on a historical perspective through the family, but there is a history in West Africa which is not well known within Judaism. But document it nonetheless. Uh, when we read the Talmud, the rabbis ask, where did the lost tribes go? And the rabbis respond, one of them at least, says, in Afrique. All commentators, or most commentators, would say this term Afrique means Africa. We also know that it's been documented about a large group of Jews coming from Yemen migrating from Yemen all the way to West Africa through trade and settling into West Africa. And this, this particular Jewish group came in and they formed what's called 14 dynastic kings. So this 14 dynastic kings uh, of groups of Jews formed a great community. I mean, then we have the history of, of Malkeda, um, who is also known, uh, I forget her name, 
Kahena, who fought against the Muslims. She was the queen of the Berbers. Uh, we know about the Berber Jews that also migrated to West Africa. Then we hear about other Egyptian Jews that migrated to West Africa and formed the community. Yes, there were many West African uh, Jewish communities. And Mali, which was the richest country in the world during that time, we're speaking from the time of the 3rd century CE all the way up to the uh, 9th century CE. And, of course, many of these African Jews in West Africa were not a homogenous group, but they were many groups of Jews in West Africa. Today, there exists a large group of Africans in West Africa, Nigeria, uh, the Igbos, who have the same claim, this historical tradition, that they are Jews. We're talking about millions upon millions. And we also have the tradition in Ghana. So many Jewish scholars or naysayers will say, well, the 14th dynastic kings within a big Jewish community in West Africa and Mali and in Ghana, and you have Jews in Timbuktu, all have left and disappeared. Now, let's be honest about history. A group of people just doesn't disappear out of nowhere. They have to migrate. And many of these traditions and many of these concepts and these claims seem to have survived not only from the people in Ghana and in Nigeria and other places of West Africa, but we see that this history has migrated even during the slave trade of America. We see Africans who were brought into the Caribbean and made the same claim that they are Jews. And then from there, we see people who have migrated to America making the same claim. Now, these claims aren't empty because there are at least 10 explorers who have no invested interest in claiming that there were African Jews in Af West Africa. We have Mungo Park being one who claimed that in his explorations in West, into West Africa, long before there were colonizations of great Christian missionaries, saying that there were Torah scrolls. And one of the great Torah scrolls um, for a great price, they call it Torata le Moshe, or Torata le Musa, which is Arabic, means the Torah of Moses in West Africa. So, while many African Americans have this claim, and many African Americans can have this, have this affinity and connection to West Africa, um, we also have to caution ourselves because is a claim good enough? Not necessarily. According to Jewish law, you need what's called a Masora. And that Masora is a long tradition that maintained itself for a long time, not just by itself, but within the community. So many of them, or many African Americans, may have to face something called conversion because just claiming that you're a West African Jew from West Africa may not be good enough. And then yet again, there's a Jewish law called the Laws of Bnei Anusim that also takes off the cause for those who were forced converted into other religions, which we already know that most African Americans coming from West Africa were forced into Christianity. And before then, they were forced to Islam, many of them. So, is a claim good enough? Not necessarily. But if you do have a claim, it should be solidified by collaborative, for, um, collaborative witnesses within the family. That will strengthen your claim as a B'nai Anusim. With that, I wish all of you who are interested in Judaism to pursue Judaism and go through the, what's called the Halakha path, the path that which every Jew must follow, which is Jewish law. This is Rabbi Yehuda, and I bid you all a shalom.